Hello and welcome to my workshop. So today we're going to be getting on to a new build and this is going to be a 2011 International Lone Star Semi. So I'm really looking forward to getting this done. So let's get started. So this is getting ready uh, to get the back section of the cab built. So it's pretty well just flat, but it's a nice rounded edge. So I wanted to get that piece built. It's easier to do that versus trying to uh, round those corners by hand. So it was, it was good for one thing. I'd had a model, the little scale, 134 scale I believe it was, model to work from. But the bad thing is that it, unlike a lot of like regular commercial pickup trucks, for whatever reason, there wasn't a whole lot of information online about this semi. So it was really hard to get dimensions. So what I end up doing is just literally taking this model, looking at the scale between the real one to what the uh, customer is looking for, and, and did a couple you know, scale calculations to come up with a, a drawing for, the, uh, for making the body. Here you can see just taking the window uh, that I cut out with a scroll saw and then just recessing that down back into the body so I'll have a, an area to cut around and then you know kind of reinforcing that with some super glue so it's a little bit stronger and doesn't de deteriorate. Now back to the sander and I'm working on the roof and so it, it's literally just the same thing. I, I get the shape I want from one one dimension like looking down and then get the shape I want looking from the front and the side and, and transfer that on to the wood and just keep kind of slowly working toward that. In the end it had some recessed sections in there and I thought it would be easiest to make those by actually making raised sections out of styrene which then you know would in turn make a, a recessed section in between. And so just you know added the styrene to it, uh, cut out a little section around the front where the, uh, the windscreen would go and then again just reinforcing the edges with some CA glue. You know, cut along the edge and, and start to uh, slowly remove the material to get enough of it until you can force the vacuum form out of the finished part. So now you can see how that back piece and the roof meet up and what that does is it gives you a nice good edge to put the side panel on. So the side panel isn't exactly flat, it is rounded from top to bottom, but it's such a gradual curve I was able to, to bend that by hand and so I didn't have to, have to do anything with the vacuum form which worked out pretty nice. So in the past I had been using an inner structure and building off that inner structure to make the outer structure but I've started to you know get my vacuum forms a little bit more precise than when they were before. I'm working from one piece to the next to the next to the next and I'm building them so they're actually lining up pretty well. So what I've decided to do is to try and avoid that inner structure which saves a little bit of weight and just kind of build the outer shell which is more close to what a hard body would be if you bought one from like say a, you know someone that injection molded it. So you can see the front window and stuff starting to take shape. So I'm just getting some measurements. Like I said, you know, working off of the little model. You know, it was a little bit of a chop to the top, so it was a little bit of a difference in the the height of the cab, but most of it was exactly the same as as the model so it was nice that I could have my drawing and then reference back to the scale model with some calipers and you know a calculator to kind of figure out the scale if I needed to kind of see what something is, is in perspective. So I like to 
kit, you know, a rough form done as I'm going through the process to begin with. And so here I'm just getting those seams close to, to where they need to be. I still got to come back and do a lot of filling, a lot of sanding to get them finalized. But I just want to get it close. I don't want to spend too much time on it. And then I could just kind of move on and get the whole thing done. So again, you know, you get the one side figured out and make sure it looks correct, and then you're just copying over to the other side. So now I have both the side panels done, you know, the long nose, I basically had to build the hood. So this piece is, again, just piece MDF. I get my shape and now I'm carving to the line that I've drawn on here from the side, the side profile. And then that gives me a nice hard edge to work towards. And I have a, you know, another profile on the uh, top of it. And so what I'm doing is I'm just slowly going back and forth until that profile matches for whatever shape I'm looking for. As you can see here, I just, you know, use calipers, take a measurement, calculate what that scale dimension would be, and then, and then see if that looks about right, and then, you know, make any small adjustments and move forward. And much like I did on the roof, the hood uh, had a raised portion, so instead of carving out a big section on both sides and trying to make both those match, I just take some, a piece of styrene and glue it into shape. Uh, I have to end up uh, sanding the end because it, uh, it tapers off. But it, it's still pretty easy to do that. You know, a little bit of CA glue, pretty quick to, to do that instead of versus, you know, coming in and, like I said, removing material down both sides. Sometimes you just have to end up doing that. So that's what this is now. It's a, it looks like some kind of an air intake. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know a whole lot about diesel trucks or semis, but it's some kind of a recessed area on the, uh, the hood. So I'm just marking that out and I'm going to basically drill out the majority of the material and then use Dremel tools and sandpaper and files and whatever I have to kind of get that shape right. Cutting it out of the mold, which is basically slowly working up to the lines and getting as much as you can removed. Once you get it to that point, you can pop the mold out. And what you want to avoid is try, trying to like really pull too hard because it's pretty easy to rip this plastic if you're really you know yanking on it. So you can see how I, I'm taking MDF and just CA glue and building up a, a larger buck, a larger piece to carve out of for the uh, the front. So this is going to be the grill, and so what I'm doing is kind of slowly uh, working the shapes and getting things carved into place so that they'll line up with the shape I'm looking for. One of the things I try to do is to keep the, the model you know, in the right shape and, and the right distance apart, I'll put these temporary pieces in across the bottom. And it's pretty easy to come back with a pair of cutters and uh, knock those out later. So it was quite unfortunate for my arm and shoulder that the this piece was a, probably about three millimeters taller than my bandsaw could take. So I had to cut that down by hand just to kind of remove some of the material. Uh, you, you know, obviously I could have sanded that down, but that would just been so much more sanding and so much more dust to deal with. So I'm trying to get the bulk of the material away and then come back and do the, the fine tuned sanding. You know, one of the things I kind of think about when I'm doing this sanding is it really is removing or kind of making facets smaller and smaller. That's really what sanding is is you know you're doing your rough sanding you end up with these facets or, or basically flat planes and and so you get that when you cut the material with the bandsaw or, or any other kind of saw and then you come back and you make 
multiple smaller flat planes and then you take more you know finer sandpaper and you're making multiple smaller and you're just working your way down to what feels like a smooth surface I just cut that out so I'll be able to come back and put in the fenders later after I get that vacuum form made. So I have most of the cab done, but there's also a sleeper to this. So the back of the sleeper is essentially just a square box. It's really not much to it. There's some wings that come off the back of it, and there's, you know, the basically the back is a stamped metal which I'll simulate with you know some pieces that I'm gluing on the outside. Now, like I said, most of the back part is pretty easy. Now, the front of it that goes up over the cab, that's a little more difficult. But right now, I'm just getting the, the back section built. Yeah, so one of the things to, to really pay attention to is making sure that you have good uh, square angles on the material you're, you're using. So what I'll have kind of got into a habit of is I pick up a piece of, of styrene that I'm about to work on and I check for a square corner and I mark that corner. What I do is I build off of that corner. So I kind of I know that things are actually square and they're not askew, which is going to end up propagating down the, the model. Like I said, most of the, the it was just a box. It was just at the, at the very top. You could see where the the box kind of sunk in toward the middle. It's very simple to do that. You, you just cut the material away. You slice some portion. You bend it by hand down. You glue it in place, and and then you can come back and put the side pieces in later to cover up where that uh, gap is. So there's a transition where it comes off the roof of the sleeper to the side that's recessed in. So what I ended up doing was just taking the material, making it a little bit shorter, and then putting a thicker piece of styrene in, and then coming back and putting another piece on top of that to shift that back a little bit, which what that does, it gives you that recessed look from the side. So as I mentioned, the part that goes in the front of the sleeper is a little bit more complicated, and, but it's basically the same principle as making the roof or the hood or the back piece. You're just taking a piece of MDF wood that's the right dimensions, you know, maybe a little bit bigger than what you're looking for, and start marking down each profile, top, side, and whatever you need to get that material identified so you can cut it out or sand it away. So after I got the basic shape and I needed it to have a section where that recessed portion in the back matches up with the in the front. So I'm just basically taking a Dremel, cutting from the sides, and then taking a razor knife and then kind of carefully clearing that material away so that it ended up with that recess all the way around. The last thing to do was to put uh, essentially a chamfer on the bottom of this. It doesn't come straight down, it actually cuts up underneath to meet up with the cab there. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do for the to make the actual that portion in the, in the front, but what I, I ended up was able to do was I made a vacuum form of the top, and then I turned it upside down and made a vacuum form of the bottom, and then I just glued those pieces together, which gave me a a piece had a nice shape on the bottom and a nice shape on the top because when the vacuum form pulls it's going to have a webbing toward the bottom there's no way I would have been able to get that thing to wrap around as much as I need it there so here are just a couple little pieces that needed to be 
put onto the sleeper to help match up to the cab and kind of make it look like it was fit snugly to the body and it was no huge gap there. And so this sleeper cab, it basically just bolts on to the uh, cab. You can see the four holes there. So as I mentioned, the back panel of the sleeper cab is a pressed material, it's a pressed metal. And they do that for strength. Uh, they put those pieces and shapes in there in a big, large panel, and it keeps it from vibrating and shift around. It gives a lot of a strength. So to simulate that, I'm just taking a thinner piece of styrene, removing material, gluing that thing down so that it gives it the look of a pressed press material once you get the paint on there. So I found with these larger pieces like this, what I'll do is I will get the glue on the one piece, make sure that it gets it good and soft, give it a few seconds, put it on the other piece, and then once that kind of, both pieces get good and soft, I'll come back and put one final coat on and then it sticks together really nicely. So just doing some final shaping for the uh, fenders. I'm trying to make them basically both at the same time so that I can get them as accurate as possible. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to uh, match up where the body is going to go and sit down into this fender. And so when I make the vacuum form, I have plenty of material to work with, but I'll be able to cut to that line I'm carving in right now with, with the rotary tool. Again, use the CA glue to strengthen up those joints, when you're, especially when you're gonna be cutting away with it with a razor knife. You could take a razor knife and pretty quickly cut through a piece of MDF, but if you have that CA glue that's, that's kind of soaked into it, it'll tend to last a lot longer. You know, so once these pieces are cut out, it's just basically offering them up with some solvent and then backing that with a CA glue. As you hear those little wings I was talking about that kind of protrude back. They ended up having some bracketry that holds them on the place. From the side, I end up with a expanded PVC that I use some CA glue to hold in place. It worked really well, but it was, it was a time-consuming part to you know cut these all out by hand and, and make them match. So one of the things I've been doing a lot here lately is, is for corners. Instead of trying to cut that with a razor knife, I cut the straight line both to it, cut an angle across the corner, get the bulk of the material removed, and come back with the Dremel tool and just Dremel that material away. And you end up with a much cleaner joint, a much uh, rounder joint than you can with a razor knife. It tends to go quicker too. So here I'm taking some these latches that I have. They're uh, from Pushrod 3D, and they're 3D printed latches. And I'm just basically opening up a hole in the side, taking some files and getting that thing kind of fine-tuned, and then pressing that 3D printed part in for the basically for the door handle, and then just uh, glue that in from the back side. So I don't know if these are actual uh, functioning louvers on the side or if they're just decorative, but they have these louvers. So I started out with a half round top and bottom to kind of frame in 
the section where this is going to be and then use a thinner material to cut that shape in. Did a little bit of math, looked at the picture to see how many were actually there. What I'm doing is I'm stacking up one on top of the other and so that it has that look of the vents as they're open up to the back. So with this, these thinner pieces, uh, it just takes a second for that uh, solvent to really catch. So it was a lot of fun building this. Uh, it's a very interesting piece. It's a little bit different than what I'm normally doing, but I had a lot of fun doing it. A lot of fun and interesting things coming up. Until then, we'll see you in the rocks.